This video addresses the issues of risk and cost associated with fire in modern buildings and will clearly show that there are ways in which the risks can be dramatically reduced. Fire is a chemical reaction, or uh, to be more precise, lots of chemical reactions between the fuel and the oxygen in the air around us. And this piece of coal is a fuel, and it contains energy that's been locked in there for 250 million years, and to release that energy, we heat it. Almost all materials, even human beings, react in this way. Given enough heat energy and oxygen, they break down to produce the reaction we call fire. People think they understand fire because they see their garden bonfire or they go to a Guy Fawkes night celebration. But when fire occurs in a building, it's quite different. It's much more rapid and it's much more dangerous. When fire occurs inside a building, all the heat and smoke that's produced stops under the ceiling and forms a layer. And that layer spreads out very rapidly sideways. And most people who die in fire die because they've inhaled smoke in that layer at some distance from the fire itself. But the other thing is that that hot layer it imposes a very high level of thermal attack on the building and the contents and the people in the building. And when that layer reaches about 500 degrees centigrade, the thermal radiation it gives off is so intense that it will ignite everything else in the building. And that leads to the phenomenon we know as flashover, which produces a sudden and severe increase in the level of the fire. And that's very dangerous. The threat of fire is an ever-present concern for building owners, as the consequences can be devastating. In order to evaluate fire risks properly, we have to consider not just building design, but also the materials involved and their likely performance in a real fire. Today's specifier has a wide range of insulating materials to choose from. The trend in modern buildings to larger structures designed to accept changes in future use has led to the development of new insulation systems. These systems can, in turn, introduce new difficulties with regard to fire. There have been many disastrous examples where buildings involving combustible insulating materials have been largely or wholly destroyed. In the United Kingdom, we have a phenomenon uh, described as portal frame buildings. They're a very lightweight structure. Uh, they're very easy to erect and construct, and they're very easy to fill, and they're very large cubic capacity. The design and construction of the building, when you add to that the contents of the building, what happens is if a small fire starts, it very, very rapidly spreads to the structure of the building. And in a very short space of time, we're talking in times of less than 20 minutes, the building will be completely destroyed by fire. For over 10 years, the Rockwool Group have conducted scientifically structured, large-scale demonstrations at their extensive product development facility in Denmark. These demonstrations which have been viewed by thousands of independent professionals have clearly demonstrated the risks posed by combustible materials. The Rockwall Group is committed to developing products to the highest standards of fire performance. Concern about the risks of fire has prompted many building owners to put in place careful specification procedures. Initially the uh, requirement is for building regs for the insulation of the building but then from there we start uh, looking at uh, a rover risk management group uh, require uh, a non-combustible structure. So we tend to look at a mineral fibre because of its resistance for incombustion and it's um, also the, the reduction of uh, fume and gases giving off uh, during a fire. Rockwell fire protection products will not contribute to the development of a fire, nor will they release corrosive smoke and toxic fumes. Rockwell products contain a fire. They are capable of continuous performance up to 800 degrees Celsius, with a melting point in excess of 1000 degrees Celsius. Rockwell is manufactured from a melt of volcanic rock at 1500 degrees Celsius, spun into a wool-like structure then impregnated with a binding agent and also mineral oil, 
which imparts water repellent properties. But why are combustible insulation materials still used? They're in a climate, really, of deregulation. There is generally a move to uh, make life easier for the commercial uh, field, uh, make certain they're competitive. So there is a general thrust and encouragement from central government uh, to, in fact, uh, put up uh, lightweight, uh, fairly cheap uh, uh, structures. Uh, one needs to recognise that from the local authority point of view. Uh, and really try and stri strike a balance between uh, maintaining the safety aspects, both the firefighters and the occupants. Although you may meet the requirements of the building regulations, uh, I, I certainly think that in, in future that uh, building regulations will be dictated to by insurance companies and probably fire services. Life is lost in a very short space of time due to smoke production. A very short space of time. So anything that buys time when a fire occurs has to be valuable. And we need to know that the fire isn't going to go around us because of inadequacies in the compartmentation. So using non-combustible material properly installed will give us a degree of security that drawing a line in a building or in, in, in any site and saying this is where we would stop the fire spreading and we will then attack the fire from this point, that level of security is actually quite crucial. The recent history of fires in the food industry has shown that people actually manage to go out of business um, and our major customers are beginning to take notice of interruption in their supply and are beginning to ask questions about what we're doing to protect our factories. New materials and new techniques for using them provide us with exciting opportunities for new buildings and we're all pleased with that. But we have to be careful when we do this that we don't introduce some new and unexpected fire risk. And very often this can happen and we don't spot it because the fire tests we're using are not equipped to spot those sort of problems. Under the uh, construction design and management regulations, um, we as designers have become a little uh, more concerned about the, ha uh, the hazardous nature, potential hazardous nature of materials in use, um, both in the installation, maintenance and eventual uh, de demolition or removal of the building components. And I think that, um, certainly in terms of uh, installing mineral wool uh, compared to some other uh, insulations, that, that it performs really very well, very favourably. It's all sorts of parts of the design process that economics do um, curtail, but f uh, safety, fire safety, um, is certainly not one. Insulated composite panels have been adopted extensively by specifiers as they are capable of quickly producing a weathertight, insulated and reliable building envelope. So-called sandwich panel construction, where you, you, particularly during the, the, uh, for the food processing industry, you will have a lightweight sandwich with polyurethane foam in between the sandwiches. But a breach in the thermal barrier, either inside the building or outside of the building, it gets into the polyurethane lining and you've got a fire of disproportionate size to the size and use of the building. If a fire develops in a building constructed with foam cord composite panels, there is a risk that the panel cores can become involved in the fire, leading to possible collapse of the panel systems and an acceleration of the rate of fire spread. We can't get to that foam because the outside is protected against weather, the inside is protected because they keep a sterile environment for food production inside. It burns up through that sandwich and right across the building. We just can't get to it. By the time the fire brigade are in a position to begin fighting the fire, it can be well developed. Firefighting services are concerned about the risk to personnel in such circumstances. This is what the fire service is worried about. This piece of wall is made up of some insulating foam sandwiched between two thin pieces of metal. And as the foam burns, it shrinks, causing the walls to collapse into the building. Burning foam insulation can also release vast amounts of corrosive and toxic smoke, resulting in both further damage to the fabric of buildings and potentially serious environmental problems. There is no longer any reason why these kinds of problems need be suffered, because an alternative range of panels with fire inert insulation is available. Factory engineered, they provide a solution that is exceptionally strong 
but a tiny fraction of the weight of traditional construction systems. Rockwell's own demonstrations clearly show the risks posed by combustible plastic foams. The first construction has a core of polyurethane. The other construction has a core of Rockwell insulation. The fire load used is 50% less than in a normal commercial or industrial building. The fire starts to develop very quickly. After just three minutes, the fire penetrates the metal skin and spreads rapidly through the polyurethane insulation. On the Rockwell construction, the flames from the fire load come out of the doorway, yet the insulation prevents the spread of fire. Despite the small size of this test hut, the metal sheets make it difficult to extinguish the burning polyurethane. On the Rockwell construction, the heat has melted the plastic coating on the metal sheets in the doorway, yet the Rockwell insulation did not allow the fire to spread through the composite panels. During the 1980s, when we were building a lot of factories out of polystyrene and polyurethane cord uh, material, we developed a large number of buildings, but they were highly susceptible to fire. And in fact, we had three serious fires. So we started to look for something which had a fire inert core. Following an incident in one of Northern Foods factories, the value of rock wool panels in limiting business interruption was demonstrated. We'd put, uh, in effect, a fire bunker around one of our fryers. Um, the fryer did, in fact, go up in flames, but the factory didn't. It was retained within that bunker. Rockwell composite panels offer a cost-effective building system. They are weathertight, structurally sound, fire safe and environmentally safe. Warm flat roofing systems provide an economical method for insulating and waterproofing a building. Such constructions provide clear span areas ideally suited to open plan buildings such as Hong Kong Airport. But these structures can introduce new risks for both firefighters and occupants should they suffer a fire. Some insulation materials melt when they're heated. And this can cause a problem in fire because as it melts, it can move around and can spread fire, particularly if the material is used high up in the building, in a ceiling or in a roof because when molten materials fall from a roof, they can spread fire, they can injure people who are trying to escape, and they can make life very difficult for firefighters. Rockwell's own large-scale demonstrations clearly show the differences between combustible plastic foams and non-combustible flat roof insulation. The first house is insulated with polyurethane, also called ISO in North America. The hut in the middle is insulated with rock wool and the last hut with fire retarded expanded polystyrene. Note the roof at the back. Ignite the chemically retarded polystyrene mission. After nearly six minutes, the polyurethane insulation also catches fire. The volumes of yellow smoke you can see contain nitrogen oxides and highly toxic cyanic gases and this is from only a 15 square meter roof. This is all that is left of the polystyrene roof. The fire also left the polyurethane roof severely damaged. Despite a temperature inside the hut of more than a thousand degrees, the rock wool insulation neither ignited nor melted. So, do the building regulations in the UK take proper account of combustible insulation products? If you want to find out how a product is going to behave in a fire, you can use a standard fire test. There are large-scale fire tests and small-scale fire tests. The large-scale fire tests can be very realistic and give you a very clear impression of what will happen in a real fire. Small-scale fire tests can be helpful, but in many cases they can be misleading. And the other problem is, as more new materials and new techniques are used in the construction of buildings, some of these tests become useless because they're not applicable anymore. There is a problem, certainly, with the large uh, cube um, 
uh, commercial developments we, ha we have uh, around the various towns in the fact that they do appear to have collapsed, if you look at recent history, very early on. With regards to flat roofs, I mean, I personally, I like to see adequate ventilation so that you don't get the heat build up and uh, the products of combustion building up in the building that bring about that rapid collapse. And I think some improvements in the general construction and use of materials uh, 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 is, is not unreasonable. The spread of fire across a roof insulated with combustible material can develop at frightening speed. And the problem of plastic foam insulation has been known for many years. This factory in Germany was razed to the ground in the 1980s. However, there is a fire-safe alternative. If mineral wool roofing products had been specified, the result could have been very different, allowing the firefighters to go in and put the fire out, thus saving millions of pounds. Land Rover recognized this and have taken steps to avoid anything like it occurring to their new paint shop at Solihull. We've got a building approximately 320 metres by 92 metres uh, on plan area at three different levels, uh, which is the new paint shop. Um, and in that paint shop, we've got solvent, we've got paints, we've got a lot of very volatile liquids floating about. Now, if that starts burning, gas is given off, may have different reactions with different materials. Now, if you're ta talking about a chemically produced foam board, then within that foam there is chemicals that mix and start giving off other gases. If you've got something that's fairly inert and a, and a naturally occurring element, such as a rock fibre type material, then it's less likely to contribute and give off uh, products within that fire. So this is really where the selection for material on the paint shop is focused. The natural solution is a rock fibre material. The total cost of a fire does not stop at just rebuilding. Loss of immunity, environmental effects, spiralling insurance premiums, and of course the ever-present risk to life. All must be taken into account before deciding which insulation materials to use. I don't think we can ever stop fires from occurring in buildings, but what we can do is to design them in such a way that when a fire occurs, it's not a disaster. At the moment, there is no real provision in the design phase to add to the uh, safety of firefighters who go in after the evacuation. If food manufacturers carry out risk management procedures and view the continuity of supply to their customers as being of paramount importance, then those parts of the food industry that rely heavily on insulated panel, in my opinion, can make no other decision but to go for a rock wall cord material. If you consider a fire in a building and the environment after that fire, what's happened to it? In the use of a foam board, you have a problem. If you use rock fibre, you haven't got the problem. Questions about fire-safe construction are being considered by a wide range of professionals. Rockwool fire protection products provide the security of being non-combustible and a range of systems which will create genuinely fire-safe construction by design.